Turn to Ezekiel 46. We are going to continue. This would be uh, part three on the will of God. And as a quick review, we learned in part one that God desires us to choose life. Not yesterday, but today. Continuously choose life. And we choose life by loving God, and we love God by getting to know Him intimately and knowing He is truth, thereby we obey Him. In uh, part two, we then move to understanding grace. He said, gee, what is grace? And we all recorded uh, what we've been told. Tradition says that grace is unmerited favor. And we said, well, wait a minute, there's a problem. The word favor means grace. <laughs> you can't use the same word to define itself. Mm -hmm. So grace, per, per traditional definition, is unmerited grace. Okay, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> so we, we, we went and looked for a better definition of grace, and we found it. So we, 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 we redefined grace to be God exerting the power of Christ on our behalf. And then, of course, we, we looked at what, what, what does it mean that the power of Christ is exerted on our behalf. And we saw that in Matthew 28, 18, that Christ had all power in heaven and in earth was given unto him. Mm -hmm. We looked at John 1, 12, where he says, I give you power to become sons of God. Also then, in John 17, uh, verse 1, 2, and 3, he says, God has given, the, the, the key power that we care about is that God has given him the power to give eternal life unto us. So ultimately, grace is God ex is exerting the power of Christ onto eternal life mm -hmm. on our behalf. Mm -hmm. That's grace. Um, we won't probably get to it today. Well, no, we will to some degree. But next week, we probably will get to the unmerited piece. Because I also said, well, that's actually not true either. Okay? Sometimes it's true, but that sometimes it's not. So we can't always use the word unmerited when we talk about grace. It, there is a way to actually merit grace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll talk about it next week. Okay? Uh, that's next week's topic. <laughs> but I wanted to put that out there. The other thing we discovered last week was part of our issue uh, beyond just choosing grace is that we're not operating as children. We read the scripture in, in, in the book of Mark that says that we must come as a child. Mm -hmm. And that means we ask more questions than we assume. Mm -hmm. We pastor God. Should I do this, Lord? Should I do this? We pastor him. Because once we're born again, we, we know literally nothing. We know nothing the moment we're born again. So we have to then proceed and act like children who go to their parents. Remember, we, we imagine being seven years old and live with our, 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 our loving father. And as things come up, we went to father and said, Daddy, I need. Daddy, I need. And so forth. The issue is, so many of us come to the Lord as adults that we bring that identity that we are an adult, which is a false identity because the, 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 the adult we think we are is an adult based on the world, based on age, based on money, based on things of the world, and it is not an adult in Christ. An adult in Christ is defined in Hebrews 5.14 that says uh, that, that you can discern between good and evil. And the only way you can discern between good and evil is that you now know what good is. So as a born-again Christian, you don't know what good is. You've just been introduced to it. So we have to now spend our, our life learning what is good so we can mature in Christ. But, like I said, unfortunately, because we've already said to ourselves we are an adult, then we disdain be, be, uh, so humbling ourselves to become a child again. That we continue to try to operate with God as an adult, just knowing some more things. And he says, no, <laughs> you indeed were born again. You must operate as a child. Mm -hmm. You must operate as a child. So, uh, not only the will of God is for us to choose life, but the will of God is that we recognize we don't know anything. And because of that, tap into him. For those all things. So we, who knows all things. Now, we had to come back to that concept 
um, once, we, once we establish um, some other things. But keep that in mind that we right now are making decisions that we probably shouldn't be making. We are crossing some lines that are reserved for God to make. There are certain, certain decisions God should be making. We should never make. And we don't recognize that. The problem is when we cross those particular lines, then God, God comes against us. We, we recall we said that God resists the proud. Well, the proud make, make, I call them boundary decisions. And don't inquire of the Lord. So we, we're going to get into that a little bit more. But, um, uh, Today we're going to deal with what I said last week. We're going to talk about, okay, I know i got to choose life. I know i got to operate more like a child, okay. But there should be an automatic question that says, okay, but what do I get? Hmm. What do I get? What's, what's default? What's mine in my father's house? So we're going to kind of deal with that today. Um, what's in the father's house? And how do I tap into it? And, and we'll show by that. That if I know it's in, his father's, in my father's house, that there are things I'm doing, because we also define, we ask, uh, why do you work? And people said they work to pay bills, and another response was they work for a living. So we're going to prove today that both of those answers are, for the most part, 